Hey YouTube, this is a quick video to share my final decision on which ABR I'm gonna stick with. So I've posted uh, a couple of other videos in the past where I've talked about the Arcam ABR20, the Denon ABR-E110, the NADT778, and a few months ago I tried out an Anthem MRX 1140, which had way too many bugs, so I ended up sending that one back, but then I learned that they, I saw in the forums that they had posted some um, firmware updates, so I, I bought another one. This is the newer one. I also tried out a Marantz SR8015. I did not post a video about that one, but I'll just kind of share briefly that Nice unit for home theater, but uh, I was not at all impressed with its two-channel capabilities. So, final decision came down to an Arcam AVR30 versus an Anthem MRX 1140. And in my prior video about an Arcam AVR20, I shared that I was super impressed with that unit, extremely impressed. And because I was so impressed with it and I have the audio file bug, I wondered you know, well, how much better can the AVR30 be? And so I bought one, bought an AVR30. What I will say between AVR20 and AVR30 is that the AVR30 is slightly better. It's, uh, I can tell in my system that it's a little bit more powerful. It sounds a little bit more refined. But to be honest with you, if somebody, if one of my friends was to ask me, hey, which one should I get? I would have a hard time recommending the AVR30 from a value standpoint. It's significantly more expensive. And I I just, you know, the law of diminishing, diminishing returns really kicks in between the AVR20 and AVR30. With that said, I've still decided to stay with the AVR30 because that small difference in sound is, is worth it to me. But I, but I will admit, I don't think the value is there to make that jump. So, but, uh, so it came down, final decision came down to AVR30 versus Anthem MRX 1140 and the AVR30 to me is slightly beating the MRX 1140. Even the AVR20 to me, I think I would choose that one over the MRX 1140. Here's why. I think for two channel performance, the Arcam, while the Anthem sounds good, the Arcam sounds better. In terms of streaming capability, the Arcam wipes the floor with the Anthem. Rune is still in coming soon status on the Anthem. It has not been implemented. And Rune on the Arcam works wonderfully. It's I, I have quite a few different Rune uh, Rune capable devices in my in my home. Rune Rune ready is what I think they call it. Uh, for example, like my Gold Note IS one thousand, the Arcam works great, extremely reliable with Rune. And one of the just uh, features that that really uh, has I found to become important for me is on the remote control. They're the fast forward and reverse buttons work with Rune. I don't know why more manufacturers don't implement that. Um, there's no feature like that to be found on the Anthem remote as far as as far as I can tell. So uh, kudos to, to Arcam for, for doing that. I think in terms of sound signature, um, this is going to sound a little bit funny, that I'm choosing the Arcam, but I slightly prefer the, the Anthem. I think the Anthem... You know, I like a warm, rich tonality, and the Anthem gives me a little bit more of that. The Arcam does give it to me. Anthem just gives me a little bit more. I do find on the Arcam, I have to bump the bass. Uh, there's tone controls, and I bump the bass up a little bit to get me closer to the Anthem. But the Anthem gives me that without having to uh, use any tone controls. So I thought I'd mention that. Between the two, the Arcam is a little bit more neutral sounding, and... For me, these two units really kind of highlight for me once again the importance of equipment matching. So I'm not in my home theater today, but I usually run my Kef R700s in my home theater. And um, and I think the Arcam sounds fantastic with the Kefs, really, really good with the Kefs, especially when I use my RHEL uh, S510s right off of the speaker taps like uh, RHEL recommends. And then I also run the, the LFE uh, inputs to the rail because uh, it has separate separate gain controls. The Anthem also sounds great with the Kefs, but I have a, a pair of older um, Hyperion speakers. And the while the Arcam sounds good with it, there are times where it gets a little bit, it sounds a little bit grating to my ears. It's not really bright or brittle or anything like that it just doesn't sound as good as when i use the anthem so 
I think the anthem is a slightly safer bet for people who, you know, I'm sure, you know, that there's thousands of different speaker uh, types and sizes and driver uh, implementations and all that kind of stuff, crossover implementations. It's just lots and lots of choices when it comes to speakers. I think the Anthem is actually a little bit safer bet um, than the Arcam. I think the Arcam requires caref- more careful uh, speaker matching, but when you get that match right, it sounds amazing. And one example I'll give you is um, there's this movie, new movie on Disney Plus. It's uh, it's uh, you know the Dalmatian lady, uh, not a hundred one Dalmatians, but it's like a, a live act, a live. What am I trying to say? It's a new version, new take on that story. And there's a lot of old, uh, you know, older uh, classic rock tracks throughout the movie. And I was just blown away by how the Arkham sounded with the kefs and the rails. It just was, you know, even my, my wife and kids commented on how great it sounded. So if you're into really tweaking and and matching equipment and subs and speaker placement and all that stuff, if you're into getting that perfect, I think the Arcam gives you a little bit more ability to get that perfect. The Anthem, again, is a little bit more forgiving. It also sounds great. Um, You know, out of the list of different receivers that I've tried, these came out at the top and it was a very, very difficult decision for me. But those were some of the reasons why I chose the uh, the Arcam. So, um, a couple other things that come to mind: the Arcam does give you a little bit more, uh, gives you more channels of processing. I think you can do up to fourteen speaker channels, as well as four calibrate four separate subs. The Anthem, I believe, it maxes out at. Um, I think if you do a separate two-channel amp, you can get it up to thirteen speaker channels. I think, but only two subs. Um, the Arcam, you have to pay the extra money though, five hundred extra bucks to Dirac to get the the ability to calibrate four se- subs separately. Otherwise, you're limited to two summed outputs on the Arcam. It will only uh, it won't calibrate those two subs separately. They're they're what are called summed. Whereas with the Anthem, those two separate sub outputs, I believe, are calibrated separately. In terms of the room correction, I think they're both they both are excellent. Dirac is excellent. The Anthem Arc is excellent. I have a slight preference though for the Anthem Arc in terms of the room correction. I think that in my room with my speakers. It gives me a little bit better uh, performance. It definitely gives you a more visceral, um, yeah, more visceral, impactful uh, sound. You know, slightly, we're, we're talking about slight differences here, but it does give me that. Um, forgive me if I already mentioned this, but on the Arcam, I do have to boost the bump and the uh, boost the bass a little bit in the tone controls, as well as boost the subs up a little bit. With the Anthem, uh, I don't really find the need to do that. It's just, just the way that, um, you know, the, the the sound signature of it, I don't have to boost the bass and the subs when I run uh, ARC. It gives me, a, gives me a great performance without having to tweak very much. Now, with that said, as great as the, the uh, room correction solutions are on both of these, I actually prefer the each with them off. I actually prefer to do manual calibration. Sorry, I'm getting a little shaky there. I actually prefer to do manual calibration on both. So I get out my little, my old uh, Radio Shack sound level meter. I calibrate each speaker, the different, you know, the dis- distances. The rails give me the ability to do really fine tune adjustments. Um, and when I do that, when I get it dialed in, it sounds better to my ears than when I, it, you know, rather than running the uh, the room correction. So that's just my preference. What else do I want to say? I had a couple of um, a couple of notes here. I just want to make sure I got everything. Um, Anthem sounds a bit warmer. Uh, the Arcam significantly better with streaming. I, I think I mentioned it, but I'll mention. I think it's worth mentioning again. The both of them to use Spotify Connect, you have to set them up through the Google Home app, and when you do, they will show up as an output device in Spotify. The volume control, and this was one of my big complaints last time before the firmware update. When you, I use an iPhone, and I also have a, a Galaxy Note 9. When I hit the volume keys, the hardware volume keys on my phone to turn the volume up or down when I'm streaming Spotify, 
the Anthem before the firmware update would jump like 30 dB. It was crazy, like huge jumps, terrible. Uh, with the update, I think I'm, if memory serves, I think it's doing 10, 10 increment jumps, so significantly better, you know, in terms of uh, not blowing your eardrums out. The Arcam, though, it, it's per, it works perfectly with the volume keys on the phone. So that's, to me, that's an important feature. The streaming capabilities is very important for me personally. Uh, Rune is still in coming soon status with the Anthem. Uh, so you can't use Rune unless you use the AirPlay connection, which is not true Rune, in my opinion. The Arcam works great. Rune works great. Um, let me see if there's anything else. Uh, you get Oro 3D on the Arc Cam. You don't have that on the Anthem. I've already mentioned the number of channels of processing. Arc Cam has a bit more power. I don't think I've mentioned that yet. The Arc Cam, um, I can tell the Anthem runs out of gas a little bit. It, it doesn't quite run out of gas, but I can tell I get close to that point. So if you have um, you know, speakers that aren't very efficient, then you may want to think, more uh, seriously about the the Arcam or just doing separate. So if you need to have a powerful amplification, uh, something to consider there. Let me see. Um, auto switching. I don't think I mentioned this. This is an important one too. So with the with the Arcam, I can stream to it, and then if I turn on my LG OLED, it will automatically switch over to the TV. Works perfectly, just as I would expect. With the Anthem, if I'm streaming to it and I turn on my TV, it doesn't auto switch. And <laughs> that's crazy to me. Um, I do have times when it won't even turn on. If I turn on my TV, you know, if it's in off, I turn on my TV, the Anthem sometimes will not turn on. So I, I would attribute that to being a bug, but it is something that uh, Anthem needs to work out. I guess I should also mention heat. Um, the Arcam does run a little bit hotter. It's a class G uh, implementation or architecture where it has a high class A bias. And as you probably know, class A uh, outputs a lot of heat. So I, I think it's like 20 watts of class A before it kicks into class AB. And so the, the Arcam runs a little bit hotter. It's not you know, it's not crazy hot. I'm not going to cook an egg on it, but uh, but it does does run hotter. Anthem runs a little bit cooler, uh, but there is a fan in there. And some users have reported in the forums that the fan noise for them has been so irritating that they sent their units back. Um, so I think that's something that Anthem should should consider maybe uh, fine tuning that or going with a different fan or something to to make that work a little bit better. Uh, let's see if there's anything else. I think, yeah, I think that was about it. Those were the, sort of the main thoughts that I wanted to share with all of you. And uh, But if you do have any questions, feel free to post in the comment section. I'll do my best to answer. Thanks so much. Bye.